This video explains how to properly load 35 millimeter film into your SLR camera. Uh, first we're going to pull up on the rewind crank which on most cameras opens up the back. That releases the door, door swings open. You'll notice the back of the camera is divided into three sections. A chamber where the 35 millimeter film cassette is going to be loaded, uh, the shutter in the middle, and over on the right we've got um, the sprocket wheel and a take-up spool. We'll also be using the film advance lever and the shutter release button. As I release the shutter and then turn the uh, advance lever, you'll notice that both the sprocket wheel and the take-up spool move simultaneously. Right? However, if I were to try to prevent the take-up spool from rotating by placing my thumb across it, releasing the shutter, the camera still allows me to turn the advance lever even though the take-up spool is not rotating. If I try to do the same thing over here with the sprocket wheel and put my thumb across here, I cannot advance the film. It's mechanically impossible. That should be a clue to you that it's actually the sprocket wheel that's mechanically advancing the film and not the take-up spool, which is a mistake some people uh, do and they don't double check the work over here. You'll notice that there's two sets of sprockets on the sprocket wheel. There's one's on the top and the bottom, and the film has sprocket holes on both sides that we need to engage on both of them, so we're going to be certain of that. All right, next step is going to be getting the film cassette down into the chamber here. It should be pretty straightforward. Uh, it loads in like this. You'll notice that this top is uh, female versus male on this side, and that's got a little uh, slot in there which engages with the rewind spool. So I'm going to lift up on that drop that in there and then just re-engage by pushing down making sure that's all locked in. Once that's in there if you were to turn the camera on its side or upside down you'll notice the film cassette does not come out so that's another good sign that you've got that properly engaged. Uh, next we need to pull the film leader over across here and get it down into this slot. There's several slots that go on the take-up spool as I move it slowly around you see this slot here. I'm just gonna get the film leader into there enough so that it'll wrap around the the take-up spool and again then we'll be looking critically at how it's engaging with the sprocket wheel. So I pull the film across just enough. I'm going to press the leader down into the take-up spool far enough in so it hopefully engages and then I'll continue to advance the film around and you'll see that it came all the way around and I can see the, uh, the emulsion side of the film as it wrapped through there but again, that's, that's a good sign that it didn't come off immediately, but I'm more concerned with making sure that the film is now engaging both of the sprocket wheels. If I put a little tension across here and advance yet again, you can see it's going all the way around, and I have a little break in the film, and I can guarantee that the sprockets are being engaged on the top and the bottom there, and that, that means that I'm in a good spot to close the back of the camera. I'm locked down over here, engage with both sprocket wheels and I've turned around uh, once on the take-up spool. So I'm going to close the back of the camera, but I'm not done. If you were just to continue right now, this is where most people fail, where they don't guarantee the next step that this is actually all locked in place. So what we're going to do is take advantage of the rewind crank to actually see that the film is advancing. I'm going to flip up the little lever and uh, there should be some slack in the 35 millimeter film cassette as the, the film is loosely spooled in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just very gently with one finger rotating in the direction of the arrow, I'm going to take out that slack first. So this is just rotating and taking any slack that's in the cassette out. Now you feel that it's slowing down and getting really tight. I can't easily push that any further and I don't want to. I just wanted to take any slack out and now I know that as that's pushing there, it's the film is being held tight between the cassette, tight across here to that sprocket wheel. And this is the, the, the guarantee that everything's going to go well. As I release the shutter and as I advance the film here, keep your eye on the rewind crank. And as I go, you'll notice that it's moving in the exact opposite direction of me advancing the film. Uh, that is a guarantee to you that the film is coming out of the cassette and being rotated across and being pulled on to uh, past the sprocket wheels and onto the take-up spool. At this point I feel very confident that I've got the film on there and it's being engaged and pulled across. Now if you look on your uh, on your film counting wheel usually the cameras have a couple of exposures and then maybe a zero and then they start in on number one. At this point I've taken several exposures. I'm at zero so I would take one more and now advance up and I'm on frame one and ready to go out and shoot. 
If you do this every time you and you take out that slack, you know that everything is going to be correct. And when you take that film out later and process it, you're not going to be bitterly disappointed to find that you've got a clear roll of film because you thought you were exposing 36 shots. And in fact, the film wasn't advancing at all.